My name is David Barish, and by training and by inclination to a large extent, I'm an evolutionary biologist. Uh, my PhD was in evolutionary biology and animal behavior, um, what's often called sociobiology these days. Um, and at the same time, though, I've been a professor of psychology at the University of Washington for quite a long time, and so I absorbed a good deal of psychology uh, along the way. Um, and I've become increasingly involved in issues of war and peace, notably, actually, nuclear war and peace, uh, particularly applying psychological and biological uh, uh, concepts and insights there. Um, and so in, in writing this book, I, I actually had a wonderful time, and I do hope that people reading it will have an equally good time. The book in question is called Threats, From Animals to People to Societies to Countries, and really it deals with threats. <laughs> Although I think that can be sometimes misunderstood because I'm not dealing with all of the threats that we may be aware of. Indeed, threats are so widespread. We're surrounded by an ocean of threats, if you will, of one sort or another. And so, um, you know, to the extent that we often are not even aware of them. There's, a, there's the famous story, if you will, that uh, if you were to... Um, interview an intelligent fish and ask her, uh, what's your world like? Probably the last thing she'd say is, um, it's, really, it's really wet down here. Um, in the same way, I think um, threats are kind of the ocean in which we swim, and as a result are, hardly, are, are often hardly aware of them. So I started with animals, not surprisingly, um, not just because we are animals, but because animals engage in a whole array of threats that are really important and, and quite fascinating. Um, and going on from the, the animal component of threats and threat making, um, I talked about individual threats. So there are threats involved in parenting, for instance, probably more than there ought to be. You know, if you don't eat your green beans, you're not going to get any dessert. That's not so bad, but if, you're, if you don't eat your, your spinach, um, you know, you're, you're going to get a whipping or something. Well, I've been asked, what's your audience? Who's going to read this book? Well, I mean, I hope everyone reads the book, it, not just because of my, <laughs> my own personal interest in selling a lot of books, but in fact, this is, I think, a really important topic, and I, I hope those of you out there will, will agree. Um, beyond that, it's really a fascinating topic. This is a topic that makes much of what goes on in the world, um, it helps you to see much of what goes on in the world through a lens that isn't normally, isn't normally used. And I've been at pains in writing this book to make it a, um, an equation-free zone. You know, there's no fancy mathematics, there's no fancy analytic uh, ideas because the ideas, in fact, are very simple. In the book, there are a number of um, implications from understanding these things that can influence policy, individual behavior in terms of dealing with one's children, for instance, um, understanding what animals are up to when you watch dogs and cats threatening, either dog threatening another dog or dog threatening a cat or vice versa. Those things, I think, will make sense in a way that hadn't before. In a sense, this, is really, this book is really intended as an intellectual exercise and one that will provide insight that not otherwise available, but it also does have real policy prescriptions in a number of cases. Um, I mean, it's not a how-to book, you know, it's not threats for dummies, um, but it, it will give you, I think, a way to make sense of your world um, in, in a way that I would hope will be really helpful. And when I say your world, I don't just mean your own personal world, I mean that as well, but also the world in which our country operates, um, because that's your world too.